<laughs> so we were standing here yesterday, and I was just like listening. And you know, one of those things as you get as you get older and older, and uh, a little more experience. Uh, not that Brian doesn't have any experience. <laughs> Uh, keep going. You start to listen for things that maybe other people don't notice. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I was hearing right away was uh, a little bit of flashing in the in the liquid line here next to the dryer. And uh, Brian was telling me, well, that's because, you know, it gets to a bigger volume here and it flashes into a liquid as it goes through that's the dryer. That's what I said. I, <laughs> I said there's some turbulence. There's that's some all turbulence, I said. Yeah, yeah so. right. We're gonna see if the turbulence goes away. You know, one of the things here, uh, just so you at home can listen to exactly what I was listening to. You know, I'll put this mic up here so you can hear that. And uh, what you're hearing is just uh, the sound of the liquid flashing in the dryer. And so we did some back of the napkin math and it indicated it might have some subcooling, but we just didn't test it till today. We hooked up to it. You can see that we got uh, low head pressure and we got you know, six, five tenths of a degree of subcooling. Superheat looks okay, but Brian and I pulled the uh, evaporator open and took a look in there, and one side of it's completely dry, and the other side's pretty wet, and Brian said he's charged us in the past and it runs pretty low superheat. So we'll get, we'll get an idea here what's going on. But the other thing I wanted to take a look at was, um, you know, we're looking at our, uh, couple things that are happening here. Let's go in the performance section. I don't know if you want to zoom in there a little bit, Brian, how close you are. But you can see we got lower than rated capacity. Our sensible capacities on the low side, okay. Latent capacity is also on the low side. Our sensible heat ratio is 0.80, which means we're doing a lot of sensible cooling, which makes a lot of sense because half the coil is dry that we're doing a lot of sensible cooling. So I'm real curious um, how that's going to look well, compared one to the other here. And I'm just going to take a screenshot of this just so we can compare it. So when we're all done here and um, what we did we went through and just did a quick um, system profile. It's a two ton, 410A. Uh, the anomaly set up here for 350 CFM per ton, 13 to 16 here with a TXV. Superheat, uh, I did benchmark this. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that benchmark out because I just benchmarked it at one time. We'll just give it a superheat of 10 as a default. Total external static pressure, okay, half an inch, and we'll just hit submit there. And then as far as the ID goes, uh, if you're curious at all, this is the model serial number off the carrier. We were able to barcode scan these. Um, he's got barcodes. These are really Really nice when it comes to using measure quick for that because you can come in from the top and get the model number when the red line crosses you get the model coming from the bottom and get the serial number then you had to add it off two digits there's two leading digits here in the barcode we just had to wipe off there went in really nice and easy on there so that is where we're at to start with why don't we go outside and uh, let's take a look at what's going out on outdoors we're adding charge because at this point the diagnosis is telling us that it's low I mean we, yeah. we're, 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 we're low subcooling yeah. we're, sub we're, we're low subcooling uh, on the threshold for superheat. We can hear the pulsation in the liquid line, which is a pretty good indicator that we are getting some flashing in there. We're going to go outside and we're going to uh, check it out and see what, what it looks like after we get a little bit of gas in it. So we're going to go ahead and we'll just give this a little tiny purge just getting the air out in there yeah and this really doesn't make that much difference because it's a uh, it doesn't have a lot of glide to it now the other thing we did here and I, I just like doing this I grabbed a, a valve core depressor on here and the reason I like this is right now if you think about what's going on what's in the hose is in the hose what's in the system is in the system and when we get the charge right what we're testing is the superheater subcooling is not what's in our hose but what's in our system now, a lot of guys used to want to take gas from the high side and dump it back to the low side that's a bad idea because that gas that's in the hose is not in the system and then once you dump it back over you change your charge again and a lot of systems today are really critically charged so this this one's not as bad as some of the uh, like the micro channel stuff but if you dump the gas back in the micro channel system you're going to have way way too much subcooling on here so we just drove this in so we can you know add or remove gas here the other thing to take a look at here is down here at the condensate you can see we're just barely dripping we are getting a little bit out of there, so it'll be interesting to see if we get more condensate uh, as we get more latent load removal and that coil starts to work better. So we're going to go over here, we're going to go to the outdoor readings where we can see the subcooling. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start adding some gas to the machine here. I'm just going to crack this open and we're not going to go in too fast. I'm just going to let it go in and flash a little bit and I'm just listening for my compressor, see if we get any sound difference or anything like that. So now I can see my, my suction is coming up here and I'm starting to throttle in the gas and I just got my hand on here. I can actually feel it flashing through here because it's, it's cool. So I know I'm not dumping straight liquid into the compressor and then I can watch my subcooling here just slowly starting to eke up as we get, uh, get in. Now remember, gas has got to go in the suction side. It goes through the compressor. It starts to fill up in the condenser and then it backs up into the liquid line. That's what gets rid of all that flashing we're hearing in there. 
and as it backs up in the liquid line, then it's going to start to fill the evaporator coil. So when you're adding gas in the machine, you don't want to add it in too fast or you overcharge the system because it, we're, it takes time for the refrigerant to stabilize because we're adding it to one side and we're balanced. It's got to balance out between the inside and the outside. So we get this up a little bit, and then once we get it up a little bit, we'll get it close and we'll throttle it in. So I'm going to let it go in a little bit faster here. We're going a little too slow. So we'll get this up until we got at least a degree or two of subcooling here. The factory target on this is uh, 9 degrees. I'll double check it here. 11? Oh, let me change that in the... Uh your targets here. And, and measure quick, it's it's all about having good targets on here, so it's good Brian uh, pointed that out there, check, double check that. But what we did in the information section here in system info, in the profile here is where we set the superheat and the subcooling target. So this is going to calculate plus or minus three degrees of 11 degrees is in the correct zone there. So we want to make sure, and if we're going to get targets here that are correct, if this target is going to be correct, we got to make sure that we have the uh, we got to have the correct target to begin with in the uh, in the app. So if I tap on this, you can see the target's 11. So it's 8 to 14 is the is the allowable range, and then you know we can obviously we're, we're below that, so we want to add refrigerant to there. I'll tell you down at the bottom here, you know what to do. This is a just-in-time education piece. So we'll go ahead and we'll keep adding a little bit of refrigerant to that. You can see the, the high side pressure is starting to come up. If we start looking at this in the, in the trend line here, this is superheat and subcooling. So you can see our, our subcooling is increasing as we're going on. It's coming up from zero where it was at. And we'll scroll through a little bit here. This is uh, the suction line temp is starting to drop down, but that's just because we're adding gas to the machine. Liquid line temp's dropping just a tiny bit. And then we'll scroll through and get to the capacity here or the high pressure. So you can see our high pressure is on the rise. It's trending upwards as we're adding gas to the machine. These are all things that we'd expect to see here. We'll go back to the home screen here and we'll go back to, we're about 6.77 degrees here. So what I'm gonna do is just throttle this off for a minute here and let that start to stabilize. Because again, we're, it's a balancing act. We're waiting for that refrigerant just to, to normalize out here. So you can see that's coasting up 10, 11, and hopefully I didn't overshoot it here. But we'll give it a minute, we'll see. Just to be clear though, our targets are the green zones in these arcs. So we want to we want everything to kind of settle in the green zone as best as possible. Yeah, and that is a really low superheat on there, Brian. If that's uh, if that's what you're, you're typically saying that runs low, that is run. Yeah, it, it does, it runs low. I mean, I've seen it run four quite often. And and again, this is a uh, classroom unit, so they tend to get abused. Um, it's possible that we may have a valve that's uh, that's overfeeding. Or, but it'll be interesting to see on the evaporator coil. You know what we, what we get from a capacity standpoint, because well, let's go back and take a peek here. I think we can probably get the readings from outside. Oops, we'll hit uh, performance on here, so you can see. Um, let me go back here. We can definitely see our sensible heat ratio is coming down. Yeah, and our capacity is coming up too quite a bit actually. Yeah, so let's go back and let's just take a look at what those numbers were beforehand. So we're at 19, 15, 37, and 0 0.81. 19, 15, 37, and 0 0.81. And now we're at 21, 15, 52, and 75. All right, so that's looking a whole heck of a lot better. Yeah, all the way. And we're just a hair on the high side on the subcooling, but luckily this is a classroom unit, so I'm sure you're gonna blow that gas out of here quicker, sooner or later by accident. But you can see our liquid line temperature dropped down quite a bit too. We got a low liquid line temp because we got high subcooling on here. We, we did just overshoot it, and, it, and that's just how easy it is to do. You got to watch what you're doing. You want to cut it off early because it's a balancing act in there. Now we're only over by about a degree here, so we're right at the threshold of okay, right? It's plus or minus three degrees, 11 plus three, 14. So we're we're still okay, uh, but we're on the high side. We're throttling right up there against the edge. We could dump a little bit out there, but it's really not going to make too much difference on here. It probably wouldn't even affect the head pressure at this point on this on the machine. We're running high suction and low super heat, which on a TXV system uh, is going to be a pretty good indication of an overfeeding valve at this point. Let's scroll back through there. Approach looks a lot better. Compression ratio looks a little bit low, but again, because it looks like that TXV is overfeeding on there. Return supply, these are really good targets. That looks good on the supply and returner wet bulb. Temperature splits pretty spot on. Airflow on the machine, I think we said it was right at 700. 700 yeah, nailed it. Yep, and uh, 6.92. We go to the performance section. We can look at the detail performance. So this is doing 97.5% of the normalized capacity, 96.1% of the normal sensible, and 100% of the latent. And we just lost it a little bit because we'll see if it comes back in here. The testo probes are on the inside. So what we're right there, everything's looking really good as far as um, efficiency, capacity. It does measure the 
the SCFM, make sure when you look at a manufacturer's literature, if you're looking at airflow, you'll see it says SCFM, that's standard cubic feet per minute. This is the amount of actual CFM required to achieve this SCFM goal. And that just has to do with mass flow and air density across the coil. Adjusting for your actual air density in comparison to standard air. Yep, and temperature split, we're at 21 degree split. Target temperature split's 22, so within a degree there, 1.4 degrees. Dehumidification, we're pulling about 4.9 pounds an hour, about half a gallon an hour of humidity out. Right. And it's still just dripping there, but what we really picked up was, uh, was a lot of capacity on the machine. And so based on this high suction, we're running a low compression ratio which is actually good for efficiency. The risk here with that low superheat is that we're running on the razor's edge of uh, possibly flooding the compressor, which would be a, a problem. And I think you, you, you said you insulated the bulb on this? I did previously, but then uh, Bert was messing with it and I think he pulled the insulation off. So. All right, so let's take a quick peek here. We got a, obviously we might, might be a, a loose TXV bulb, could be a restriction of liquid line. Now one of the things you gotta look at when you're looking at these faults here is that it's, they might be, maybe, maybe, maybe these are not definitive it doesn't tell you for sure this is the problem with it you have to actually physically look at some things we can go in there and check our liquid line in fact we just did check for a restriction in the liquid line so we measured the temperature inside all the way to the outside made sure the liquid line was exactly the same temperature so that one we can clear out i didn't physically check the bulb in there maybe we can go in and check the bulb and see if the bulb's loose on there this is why we got a slight overcharge of refrigerant if we go back to the back to this our head pressure is a tiny bit high and if we go back to our superheat and subcooling now we're ooh, we're, we're actually we probably take a little bit of gas out of there. Yeah. So it just, it just overshot a little bit. So let's get a tank, we'll dump a little gas out. Yep. And we'll we'll see it. where we end up. We'll give it a, refrigerant charging is one of those things you, if, if you do too fast or too slow, like or too fast like I just did there, it's, it is easy to overcharge, especially if you're on micro channel, you gotta slow it way down here. And we we're just flipping through too many screens and I didn't get back to it quick enough. Once you develop a liquid seal, things really start to change quickly. So it doesn't take a lot of gas. Once you get one or like a degree of subcooling, it doesn't take much gas to raise it up, a, you know, several degrees here. And as what we'll see is as we're um, the, the coldest, you know, like right now, if we look out here, let me just show you this real quick here on the outdoor. So outdoors, it's about 88.5 degrees, right? and our approach is 1.4 degrees, which is basically how close the liquid line temperature is to the outdoor air temperature. And because we're, you know, we have this overcharge situation here, we've definitely got too much on that liquid line side. Holy cow, why is that head pressure through the roof like that? Oh, because we're, this thing keeps dumping in long after we get the tank down here. We'll get the, uh, way overcharge that. And you don't have to get your recovery machine out. You can always take refrigerant from the high side of the system back into the tank. And don't feel bad. These are mistakes everybody makes. It can happen to the best of us. Now we're looking a lot better. Let's go back to see our capacities are. 20,000 total, 15 and 49 versus 19, 15 and 37. So we picked up uh, over 1,000 BTUs of latent capacity and with 1950 versus 20. So yeah, we picked up quite a bit. Yep, so that, uh, that's the increase in latent capacity we're looking for. And uh, subcooling looks looks pretty good. Might give this one little tweak here. Just get that down just a hair and then I think we're good to go. You can see how little that changed the head pressure but how much it changed the subcooling. Pretty, pretty dramatic change there. So learn from what I did wrong. Don't overcharge the system. Don't add the gas too fast. Don't talk and do videos while you're adding refrigerant because you could overcharge your system. Let's just scroll through the rest of the readings and just take a look here. So now our approach, remember our approach was really, really low before, right? So that's, that's looking good. Compression ratio is still on the low side, but we, we think we got an overfeed in TXV there. We'll have to take a look at that bulb on there. Supply and wet bulb temperatures, that all looks good on there. Enthalpy, change in enthalpy is uh, on the low side, but that's again because the suction pressure Pressure is a driver for temperature transfer. When this is high, it's going to raise our coil temp, and that's going to change our, our enthalpy. Air flows right there, 693, 702. So that looks really good, and that's what the manufacturer's at. Target temperature split looks good. We go back here, our total sensible, latent, everything's nice range. We can go to our performance here. We're at 90. 5.8%, 95.9%, 93% of the latent load, 0.76. So system stable, which means that uh, we can evaluate the charge at this point. And we'll go in and this is our weather data here. So you can see 87 degrees at 46% relative humidity. That's really quite dry for Florida. It did make a substantial improvement in there. Subcooling still at 13.6. I'm gonna back just a hair more out of this. It's not a big deal that we're 
you know, a couple degrees over on subcooling, but why do you take the time to do it and get it right? Because you can, you know, there's literally, uh, the closer it is to the manufacturer specification, the better machine's gonna run overall. Let's take a peek at that super superheat again, see if we're still hunting or we're stabilized. So it looks like we're actually starting to stabilize a little bit too now, now that we're getting a little bit closer there. And uh, well, that's not a really high subcooling or superheat number, six degrees, six to eight degrees is pretty typical what we're seeing today. We're seeing lower superheats than we used to see in the past. So uh, I'm, I'm not at all worried about that. I think we got it pretty figured out. Let's take uh, one more peek here at our performance. So 20, 15, and 47 versus so about 1,000, 47, about 1,000 BTUs we picked up mostly on the latent side. Mostly latent cooling we picked up on the machine. So there you go, that, uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Let's go inside now and uh, let's listen to that uh, dryer and see what it sounds like. All right, there you go. Yeah, it, it doesn't quite sound the same. No, it's a lot quieter. Put your ear to it, put your hand on it. You can feel, actually, you can feel a, a, quite a bit of a temperature drop. Yep. You can feel the, and also the pulsation has gone on there. Yep, yep. So there you have it. All right. I can't tell. It's got a koozie on it. <laughs> it's very, that's the, see, that's the problem with beer can cold. We had started insulating the line, we put koozies on the line, and now nobody can tell. <laughs> So we have to use superheat and subcooling to check the charge. All right, lesson is uh, get your charge right using MeasureQuick and don't overcharge the heck out of it. That's right. All right, <laughs> All very right. good. So